Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question count primes question number 204. All right, so given an integer n, return the number of prime numbers that are strictly less than n. So for example, we have the number 10. So the numbers we can consider are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And out of those numbers, the only prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So just remember, we cannot count the number 10 itself. Cool. So we return the number of numbers, which are prime, less than 10, and that is 4. So let's see how we can solve this. I'll go through a few ways to solve it. And instead of just giving you the solution, I'll just try to go through step by step on how I got the actual solution. All right, so let's just say we consider the same example. So um, let's say n is equal to 10. So the numbers we would consider are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So everything up to 10, okay? So essentially, let's see what the most basic thing to do is. So obviously, the most brute force solution would be to test out each and every single of these numbers, right? And we're going to run it through a function. Let's say the function is called is prime. And this will tell us if the function is prime or not, right? So very simply, that is going to be so n iterations. And each time to find out if the number is prime or not is going to take an additional n times. So this is going to be basically big O of n squared. So can we actually make this a bit better? So this is still a brute force solution, but this could still be better. So essentially, in our prime function, we don't need to iterate through all the n times. So this is very important because we can use the same concept later on to make our solution better. Okay. So let's say I have the number 20. Okay. So its multiples are going to be, well, obviously 1 times 20 right? times 1. So the same thing just got repeated, right? So essentially, my point here is, if we just look at the first three pairs, we do not have to look at the other three, 10 times 2. So if you look at 2 times 10, we don't need to look at 10 times 2 again. So essentially, we can break out of our for loop a lot earlier. So how exactly do we know when to stop? So essentially, you take the square root of n. So in this case, the square root of 20, uh, that should come up to 4.4 something. So let's just, you know, uh, take the integer value of that, which is 4. And we're going to iterate through all the values up to 4. So essentially, we're going to look at 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now, instead of looking at n values, we're only going to look at square root of n. So now, our brute force solution is now going to be n times square root of n in terms of time complexity. So let's just look at our brute force solution. And then I'm just going to show you how we can improve the same thing. So this over here is going to be the brute force solution. Um, very straightforward. We iterate through all the numbers. We pass each number to the is prime function. If it is prime, it's going to return, oh, sorry, it's going to return true. If it's not prime, returns false. And based on that, we're going to add that to our results. So if it's prime, the result is going to get incremented by one. And at the ending, we return our result. Now, the obvious problem with the solution is that the time complexity, let me just go back here, it's still going to, we still have to go through all n numbers, right? Uh, and each time we're doing an additional square root of n operation. Well, this used to be n, we got it down to square root of n, so it's still better, right? But let's actually see how we can improve this, okay? So I'll be showing you an example with a larger number, so n is equal to 20, and the reason for that is because I think it'll just show the algorithm better, right? Okay, and one more thing I want to tell you is that this algorithm that I'm showing you is a very popular, well-known algorithm. I'll give you the name later on. But my point is, you don't need to really know the algorithm to kind of come up with a solution, right? So, so far what we've seen is we've had a iterative approach. So what we can try doing is we can try using dynamic programming, and that's what we're going to do. So essentially, what are we going to do? In the dynamic programming approach, we're just going to check if something is a prime number or not. Now, the entire purpose of dynamic programming is how can we use our previous results for the future or vice versa, right? And the idea is very simple. What I'm going to do is say I'm at the number 2, right? So let's say 2 ha is either uh, prime or not. I don't know yet. But a very simple thing I can do is that all the multiples of 2 in the future, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth, are not going to be prime numbers. It's just impossible, right? Because for it to be a prime number, the only factors could be one and the number itself. 
But if two is already a multiple, that means that, well, this is not a prime number, right? That's it. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to a number and then we're gonna, re gonna remove all of its multiples. Cool. So let's just look at how this is gonna work. So let's just make zero and one default values to be false for now. And there's a reason we're doing this, which I will explain later on. So the number two, is it prime or not? Well, the easiest thing we can do is we can just pass it through our function, okay? So if I'm calling the function, I'm just gonna underline it, cool? Okay, so two is gonna call the function. Is it prime? Well, it is, so that becomes true. But we also now have a lot of extra information, which is the fact that all of its multiples automatically become false, that's it, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Now, essentially what this means is, so let's just do uh, one more, so three. I don't know three as well, so I'll call the function. Uh, well, three is prime, and all of its multiples, so six, nine, 12, 15, uh, 16, um, I'm sorry, not 16, 18, are all going to be false, that's it. So now when I go to the number four, I don't need to call the is prime function again. I'm done, right? Because this value has been set to false. It's done. That's all I'm going to be doing. So essentially with this kind of method or intermediate step we reached, the number of times you call is prime is drastically going to decrease. Okay. So at the number five, we're going to call is prime. That becomes true. This also becomes true. Uh, same over here. So at five, you would remove the multiples. So you remove five, 10, 15. Uh, cool. Uh, then you have 13. 13 is also true. So is 17 is also prime and so is 19. So now the number of true values you have over here, that is going to be your answer. That is just going to be the number of prime numbers less than the number n. So now we've kind of made it better, right? By the fact that we're calling, we're calling the is prime function a lot lesser now, which is still faster, right? But we can actually make this a lot more better, okay? So in the beginning, the number two is gonna be true. So let's start off with the number three, okay? And obviously it's multiples are gonna be false. I'm just not showing that for now. So I'm at the number three. And what are some things I could get out of this, right? So if I'm at the number three, what that means is all the numbers prior to it have already been visited and all of its multiples have been changed to false. So that means that before the number three, the numbers zero, one, and two have been visited and all of its multiples have been turned to false. Okay, now obviously I'm not counting zero and one. And why is that? Well, the multiples of zero and one are going to be everything, right? So one will give you, will make everything false, which makes no sense. So zero and one by default, we're just gonna leave it as false, okay? Because if we did the same method, everything would just end up being false, okay? Cool, so now at the number three, so that means I've experienced or I've went and explored the number two. And when I explore a number, that means that all of its multiples are gone. So essentially what this tells me is that since the number three does not have a value of false, and since all the values before it have removed its multiples and made it false, the number three has to be a prime number. That's it, okay? So now, since three is a prime number, we move, we remove, uh, so six, uh, then we would have nine would become false, so with 12, so with 15, and so with 18, right? So now let's say I go to the number five, okay? Now at the number five, I do the same thing. How do I know if the number five is prime? Well, I don't want to call the function, but essentially so far, what does it mean? I've explored the numbers zero, one, two, three, and four. And so far after exploring all the numbers prior to five, the number five itself, okay, the number five itself still does not have a factor. It still does not, it's still not false. That means that none of the numbers prior to it have five as a multiple. So all we do right now is that means five is a prime number and we change its multiples. That's it. So now we don't even need the is prime function. Now we're gonna do one more improvement to this, okay? So essentially one small thing that we have been doing so far but I just want you to make note of it, is the fact that we're only looking at the multiples for those that have a true value. And the reason for this is pretty cool. So when I'm at the number two, well, two is a prime number because everything before it was false, right? That's it. 
So none of its multiples have changed two to be false. That's it. So two becomes true. And by default, what we're also going to do, by default, we're just going to make everything true. Okay, so this is going to be the basic setup. And if something is not true, that will be changed to false. That's it. So I'm at the number two. It is true, right? Because nothing has changed it to false. So now I'm going to make all of its multiples to be false. Okay, so I'll just do that again quickly. Um, so that's four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, uh, 16, 18, right? So that's all of two's multiples. Now we go to the number three, right? And same thing, three has not been changed to false. So that means three is a prime number. So now we change three's multiples. Okay, so just very quickly, six, uh, nine, 12 is already changed, uh, 15 is gonna change, and so is 18, done. Okay, now at the number four, four is already false. Now the question is, do we consider four's multiples? And the answer to that is no. And the reason for that is because we're only going to consider the multiples of prime numbers. And the only reason for this is because every number, so let's just look at four's multiples, okay? So that's four, uh, that's eight, that's 16. Uh, what else? We have 12 and yeah, 16, cool, right? And 20, but 20 doesn't exist in this case. So essentially, all of these numbers, 8, 12, 16, can be written as multiples of the previous prime numbers of 4, right? So essentially what that means is all of these numbers can be, their prime factorization can be written solely with the numbers 2 and 3 or only 2 and only 3. But in this case, since for the multiples of 4, that's only the number 2 is enough. And the same goes on, right? So let's say now I'm at the number five. So five is true, so that would make its multiples false, which is already done in this case. And now if I go to the number six, since six is false, let's look at six multiples, right? So what is that? So you have six, you have 12 over here, and you have 18. So these numbers can, again, they can be represented with the combination of prime numbers prior to six. So the number six itself is just three times two. Right? Uh, same for the number 12, right? It's 3 times 2 times 2. So these numbers can be written as the prime factorizations of the prime numbers prior to 6. So there's no point at looking at 6's multiples because the, the previous prime numbers have already considered those numbers. So there's absolutely no point for us to do that. That's it. So now the number of times that we actually change the values to false are extremely less. It's just going to be the same as the number of prime numbers there are. That's it. So a lot of the numbers, like four, six, whichever are false, we just skip through them. We don't need to do anything. So this saves us a lot of time, right? So the time complexity over here, previously we had to go through every number. We still do, but the update is only going to be made on these numbers, right? So that's about a half, uh, around square root of n. So I would, I think, time complexity is square root of n. So again, I'm not 100% sure about this time complexity. If I am wrong, please correct me and let me know. But the space complexity in this case is obviously going to be big O of n in this case because we're using a dynamic programming area of size n. So given all this, let's see what the code looks like now. All right, so this is gonna be our code. So let's just ignore the beginning for now and let's just look at this dynamic programming area, right? So we initialize our area with all trues and it's gonna have a size of n and the zeroth and first element become false. Now this condition is very important because we're assuming that the DP array at least has two elements to be able to do this, right? So if n is less than or equal to two, we just return zero, right? It solves any further problems later as well, right? With respect to uh, this indexing, okay? So now we do our for loop, which is we start at the index two and we go through all the way till the ending. And over here, if the number is a prime number, that means that value would be true. Only if it is true, we're gonna look at all of its multiples and make it false. Now, one very important thing over here is the fact that for index in range, the first number is num times two. And the reason is simple. So if the first number is two, right? So let's say num is equal to two right now. I cannot make the two, the two itself false, right? Two is a prime number, it has to be true but its multiples will have a value of false. So that means I start at the next number, which is just times two. So num times two, 
I'm going to go all the way to the ending and the step size is going to be num. That's the same as looking at its multiples. And those all will have an index value of false. And that's it. So this is going to be our solution. Uh, let's submit this if I can zoom out. There we go. Uh, submit. Cool. And as you can see, our submission has been accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.